Hi everybody, welcome to Serenity Cards and Coaching. My name is Leela. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You can find me at leelamonkey.com. And we have a super fun class today. We are doing my Simply Stamping class. And we I do three different classes a month. One of them is Simply Stamping. Um, and one of them is technique. So today is the Simply Stamping. So we are going to learn how to make these four cards. Um, and so I will give you like quickly kind of as I go through it, I'll give you the measurements and any little tips as we go along how to make it. Oh, including this guy. Um, and we're saying farewell to some colors. So I'll just give you some little tips as we go along. If you want the PDF, you can get that off my website. And if you want the ingredients for these six cards, you can get the ingredients free. Of course, I can't stamp for you, but you can get the ingredients free with a minimum purchase. And so all that information is going to be on my website. But let's go ahead and get started with the making. And so I, I always start with the simpler ones and work my way up. And so um, even though this is simply stamping and they're all pretty simple, but we'll go ahead and start with this one. So um, in your kit, you would get actually ingredients for these two different flavors. Um, and again, I wouldn't stamp for you, but you get everything else. And so part of what I'm covering um, this month as we're transitioning to a new catalog, which I can only show you the cover, but new catalog. And if you need one, let me know. Um, I do send them to my customers automatically if you purchased from me within the last six months. And if you're on the team, of course, you get one from Stampin' Up. But um, we're saying farewell. We're in this transition period where some things are retiring and some things are um, coming in new in the beginning of May. And so this soft suede color, if you see that soft suede color right there, that's retiring. Uh, this designer series paper is retiring. So saffron is retiring. You see so saffron here as well. So um, the twine carries over, butterflies carry over, happy birthday carries over, dyes carry over, gray carries over, white of course. So let's go ahead and get to the making of the card. And I've tried to get some of this stuff done ahead of time so that you're not watching every single step, um, but that I am pointing out some, some things you can learn. Um, and again, I do very, I'm known for my PDFs. I really put a lot of love and care into them. Um, so you can get that from me either with the free kit or you can buy the PDF. But the shortcut information is um, there's a square here that's three and a half by three and a half inches. And these squares are going to be one and a half by one and a half. And I'm going to talk to you about this a little bit because in your kit, I'm not going to cut these for you. And then the cardstock layers on this guy, they come in, it's a standard card base. And on this case, I come in an eighth of an inch. And I did that because I really wanted the real estate to be able to um, kind of feature those four squares. And by the way, I should mention Pinterest is a girl's best friend, right? So I got, um, I didn't, um, I made it my own, but I got inspired by Mary Fish. So thank you, Mary Fish, for your inspiration. So um, these squares, I said, are one and a half by one and a half. And I'm going to show you this with this card, and then it's also true with another card where I have cut the squares for you. But um, you can see the patterns here. Some of them are, like, really, really light, and some of them are a bit darker. And so... I'm just going to cut up, um, you're going to get extra basically in your kit. So if you had the ingredients, you could, uh, you could make more with it. I actually really recommend this designer series paper. It is so pretty. Um, we're going to be seeing it. There's, um, a lot of different colors with it, but what I'm doing is I'm color, I'm cutting two that are kind of lighter and two that are a little more saturated. And you know what? And actually, even when I produce your kits, I will take the time to kind of pick the ideal image if I can. And I actually really liked that one. So um, now I have a few to choose from. So you're going to go ahead and cut those at one and a half and by one and a half. Um, and that, so now we've got a nice variety here. 
I've gone ahead and I've glued all that up or adhered all that up. I've even stamped this. This is a die that comes with the mm -hmm, Laura. Um, oh, I forgot the name exactly, but um, oh my gosh, I love this die. It's a great die. Um, it's got great all different size tags. I've been featuring it quite a bit. So I'm going to take these two pieces. I'm kind of going to go there and then I'm going to take these two pieces. I just like a little bit more of the suede showing. So I'm kind of going to go like that. All right. So that's it. And then you've got some extras if you want to make another one. These are dimensional onto the square and then these are dimensional onto the sheet. And then actually I've gone really dimensional happy. This guy's dimensional too. So um, I like dimensionals, I like gems, and I like bows. So I always end up paying extra postage. As a matter of fact, I rarely even buy um, postage that's just the forever. I do because like our paper pumpkin cards are pretty good for using forever stamps, but I do the non-machinable. Now you could do one or two dimensionals here. I'm doing two just because I really want a nice sturdiness. And I'm just going to go ahead. This is the other side of this designer series paper. Oh my goodness. I love it. The whole, this whole thing, this paper and the, um, the stamps and the dies that's um, from a flora, like two-tone flora, fancy flora. It's really, really pretty. Uh, the paper doesn't carry over, but the stamps and the dies do. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I know that there's a quarter of an inch border around, so I'm kind of eyeballing it. But if you wanted, if you didn't want to eyeball it like that, you could be more precise. You could line it up on the grid. Um, many times when I do want to be really careful, I'll like put all the other places pieces in place um, so that when I'm putting my pieces down, I kind of have context for them. So anyway, very simply, I've got my four squares. You can take as much time or as little time as you want to be precise about that. I think that looks fine. Um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and dimensional up the back. And that is as simple as this card is. It's pretty easy to cut for, and it, but, well, I think the hardest thing, honestly, was getting these at an eighth of an inch and then um, adhering it so that you had that teeny tiny little saffron frame showing. Like, I think that's the hardest, but eighth of an inch is just, it's just a nice, pretty look. So um, so I've got all of that undone. I'm gonna tuck this right in the corner. And again, I'm going for like a quarter of an inch border all the way around. I like it to be a quarter an inch this way and this way and then I like it to have a little more over there now how I've done the bow you'll get the bow in your kit this is our basics twine which I love and um, I love our mini glue dots these are actually leftovers from either a kit or a paper pumpkin so what I'm doing I don't know if you can see it I'm putting this um, I'm putting two little mini glue dots on the back so a couple things strategically. I paste, placed my dimensionals to the right because I knew I was going to put the bow over here. Um, I put my two mini glue dots there. I'm going to place my bow. I want my bow so that the little tails kind of go that way. So now I'm going to, and be careful that you're not smudging the word. Um, this is also our soft suede. I do want to take a moment and say that this soft suede um, ink is retiring. The cardstock is retiring. I did happen to notice there are still some soft suede things out there. I think that the re-inker is gone, but I do think that the, um, the ink pad is still out there. It's a good idea to get the ink pad and the re-inker at the same time, but um, the ink pad has quite a bit on it. So I'm placing that just right there. I've also done one where I put it kind of in the middle there and I liked that too. But um, yeah, I'm gonna do that right there. I'm gonna cut off my little tails, just kind of, well, I'm gonna do them both at the same time so that I have the same length-ish. Come on, you guys, cooperate. Well, maybe I won't. All right, I'll do 
just kind of eyeball it like that. And then there we have it. So that is our sweet, oh, oh butterfly. Okay, butterflies carry over. You will get, um, in these kits, you get enough gems and bows to, um, to finish your card. Um, but why wouldn't you buy these butterflies? They're so sweet and they're carrying over and I love them. Um, so that is our first card. And again, you can do it in so many different flavors, right? So there we have it. Yay. And this one, I didn't think the gold matched as much. So I used a little rhinestone and I used a little different twine, but, um, yeah. So partly this is in honor of, well, all of us, but Melody said, are we going to have a farewell party to the, in, to the colors that are leaving? And so this is a little bit of farewell. So saffron, farewell, soft suede, farewell. Thank you for serving. So us cute, so really cute card. Yay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the second one. <gasps> Be still my heart. Okay. I love this card. <laughs> I designed it. I came up with it. So thank you, Leela. Thank you, God. I love it. Um, I, there's two versions of it and, um, I am so glad. So what happened was, okay, that's the paper, the flora paper that I was talking about. And then these are Regency Park dies, and this is Regency Park designer series paper. So I, um, on a whim, when I realized that these dies were carrying over, I got them and it took a little bit to get here, but I'm like, you know what? I am waiting to be able to feature these in class. I had a million other things I could have featured, but um, I love them. So, um, so enough gushing genuinely, like I love this. I'm going to make up a bunch of them and it's not that hard. So let me take you through it. There is nothing. Oh, this is the flora paper. This is the Regency paper. Those two things are retiring. This petal pink ribbon is retiring. Um, everything else carries over. The dyes carry over, the thinking of you stamp set, all the colors carry over, including Fresh Freesia, which was an in color. So you would think it's leaving, but it's not because now it's um, moving into a permanent home in our color family. And then this Knight of Navy ribbon carries over. So, um, and when you get the kit, by the way, You'll definitely get this ribbon. I may give you a different ribbon here because I was running a little bit low. So you might get fresh freesia there. Or you might get something different. Um, you might get white organdy, but oh my gosh, it all looks beautiful. So let's make this scrumptious card. If I say so myself. All righty. Um, so again, I did some of this stuff ahead of time just to... Um, just to save, you know, the magic of television, but I will give you a few tips. Now, where this guy was an eighth of an inch in, just because I wanted that real estate, this one is fine being a quarter inch in. So that's just your standard base and then Knight of Navy quarter inch in, basic white quarter inch in. I want to highlight something because I taught this class in person and forgot to really give a great, great emphasis to it. And poor Kyra, she had glued down her basic white before she put her ribbon there. So um, we definitely wanna get that ribbon underneath the basic white before we adhere it and then tie our bow. Again, you're probably gonna get a different ribbon, this luscious, luscious petal pink. I think this is the last that was on my roll. And so, oh, and when you do it, I might've, um, been a little too abrupt with how I laid it. So, oh darn it. It's gonna be a teeny tiny bow because I didn't leave enough. Um, well, I'm gonna play with that. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let's, <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a little knot. How could, I was certain it was enough. I'm gonna do a little knot. I love this petal pink. Yeah, so do as I say, not as I do. You're going to watch me and I'm going to show you all the things not to do sometimes, but um, I'm just going to do a little knot right there. I could also cut it and just put a bow right there, um, but I'm just going to do a sweet little knot like that. All right, so there you go. That's going to give you your ribbon treatment. Now I want to show you, um, oh, and then I forgot to glue the squares, didn't I? I'm all, 
don't know, a little bit of a jumbo. I will cut these squares for you. And the reason being is I needed this to um, fit exactly. So I sat and lovingly cut all these squares. And then I wanted to have a mix of like, where are the darks and where are the lights? And so, and then I just follow along with the photos. So I go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. So light, dark, light, and then dark, light, dark. And you know what? I'm losing, I'm using the definition of dark loosely. Um, just the petal pink is the light. And then if there's a splash of color, that's the dark. So, well, we're going to glue around this because that was a silly little willy. Um, all right. Here's what I want to say about the gluing of the um, paper. It's a little cattywampus. It's not perfect. Um, and really what we end up with is about a quarter of an inch of an edge. So when I was first laying the paper down, I was like scrunching everything in together. And then when you go to put the sentiment on, like you can't even see it. So you really want it to go all the way out to the edges with just like a little bit of a quarter of an inch. And I wasn't even, I mean, I like it all being a little bit, you know, um, crooked and catty corner and whatever. So I'm laying it out first. Now, of course, what's underneath, you're not going to see it. So don't worry about that. And then I'm just going to go like that, get it all kind of laid out. Now, this guy where he's kind of petal pink um, and with some color, I really want the color to show. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, so there we have it. And then before I glue it down, which will be a pretty easy activity, and I'll show you how I did this, but just for purposes of um, making sure I like where my squares are, like take your blue thing and lay it out. This could even go a little bit higher. You know, when you're doing it, you think, oh gosh, I wanna have it all snug and tight, but really you can have a white space left in there because you're not gonna see underneath it. So much of it is covered. Um, so there, I think that's perfect. So then I'm gonna go around and honestly, you guys with glue, like it just needs a little bit underneath there. So I'm just gonna go, or if you had your tape dispenser, you could do that too. This is getting near the end. So I'll use a new one. Um, this one's very robust. So, oops, I probably put too much there. It's all right. So I'm just going to go in and tuck a little bit under. Would have been better without the ribbon, but you guys get to see all the things. And the good thing about glue, I'm going to move them around and get one final kind of layout um, once I'm all done. But here I am. I'm just really, you just need a dot underneath. It's not going anywhere. And then you're going to be putting your um, die cut over it. So let's kind of lay it out one more time. Let's go like that and like that like that that and that and then give one final look do i like it this could go up a little bit that looks pretty good all right so i'm going to press down now i did make a little boo-boo there's a little bit of glue that's right there did you guys know you can get a glue eraser sadly we don't sell them anymore once that's completely, completely dry, you can use a glue eraser and just rub till you get the glue off of it. So just let it dry. Do not do it when it's wet. <laughs> um, so now let's let that sit off to the side and dry and let's assemble this guy. Oh my gosh, you wanna hear something hysterical? I did it upside down too. <laughs> that's okay. You know how I'll fix it? I'll just cut it right there. And I'll probably put it on a thick white card base. It'll be fine. But anyway, you guys are, I thought I was all prepared. I'm like, Lynn, I have one final thing to do to be prepared. And then I'm going to be ahead of the game. So anyway, it's fine. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp these. Now when I use photopolymer, I want to use my Stampin' Pierce mat. So I'm going to put that under my grid. And I've got the Thinking of You stamps. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are the stamps I'm using. These, it's the Sentimental Park. 
And so for this one, I'm using Thinking Of and You. Those are two different stamps and they stamp so gorgeously. So for instance, um, this one is Thinking Of You and then we're gonna do another one that's Let's Celebrate You. And there's just so many ways to really get a lot of use out of these. They're just, they stamp gorgeously. They're just perfect. So I've got Thinking Of and then I'm going to go ahead and put my U right there. So because it's photopolymer, I want to make sure I'm stamping on a stamping pierce mat. And so that was as simple as that. And oh my gosh, you guys, they're really quite luscious. So I'm going to show you how I did this. This is the Regency Park dies or Sentimental Park dies. Now you can see in this die here, you can see there's like all the little pieces haven't poked out yet, right? And then you can see the final version where um, they're all poked out and that white piece just fits inside really nicely. There's another die actually that's a little bit smaller also. It doesn't fit with this. It kind of has that personality. Oh my gosh, so versatile. So I've got my die here now. I don't know if you guys know this. We've got these brushes. Um, now this brush, used to be sold as it is now it fits on the end of your take your pick tool there's um there's things you can add to the end of your take your pick tool and there's new ones coming in the catalog i can't wait but i just take the brush it and the the brush that comes that fits on the end of your take your pick it comes with this kind of um i don't know spongy mat too so you can roll so i'm rolling on the back of the die to get all those little glued up. And you can see how many of these I've done. I've already done a million of these. Um, so I'm gonna roll like that. And then there's still some that haven't come out. So I'm gonna use my piercing tool and I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna pierce the rest of them. So you would take your time and do that. Then the final thing you wanna do with this die is be really careful not to tear it. You wanna come in and like lift up all the way around because your white piece is going to fit exactly in there and it's going to fit snug as a bug in a rug all the way to the end. So you want to get both of those open. You want to come over here and get both of those open um, all the way to the corner and without tearing it. If you do tear it, it's just paper, roll another one. But um, once you've got that all done, then you're going to go ahead. I didn't even, at first I was gluing it don't even need to glue it. It stays in so securely. So you just tuck it into the two corners. Look how sweet that is. So then I went ahead and I added some rhinestones. I thought that was a really sweet touch. This particular um, stamp suite also comes with a different stamp set and a punch. And um, I don't know, it's a suite. There's like two bundles but there's little flowers. I think the die set even does. It has like little flowers that you could have put there instead. So we're using little rhinestones, but you could have put little flowers also. So we're gonna go ahead and add that right there. And then I'm gonna snip off the two tails. It's perfectly fine that it's just a little knot instead because this ribbon is so luscious. Um, well, and I think when one of the students made it, she like I told you, she forgot to put the ribbon. She just didn't even have the ribbon. It was fine. So there you go. So that's our finished card. And again, I did make that boo-boo with the glue. I'm going to let it dry, and then I'm going to erase the glue, and there we have it. So in your kit, I do take the time. I've cut the squares for you because I wanted you to get light, dark light, etc. I've cut the die cuts for you. You're probably going to have to poke out the pokies, but you're going to get both of these cards in your kit if you purchase minimum of $25 and you can really get some great value this month. So um, so there's your two cards right there. Beautiful card. I love it. Aren't they sweet? And a thank you to Doris. Doris was, um, we were, I don't know, Zooming or visiting the day that I um, was coming up with that. I'm like, you guys, what do you think of this? And so thank you, Doris. I think Carrie was there too. And they're like, we like it. So thank you guys for being my consultants. All right, now we are gonna move on to this next one. And this one is a farewell to colors. 
This one is a farewell. We're saying goodbye to Mango Melody. We're saying goodbye to Bermuda Bay. We're saying goodbye to Polished Pink. We're saying goodbye to Pear Pizzazz. And we're not saying goodbye to Fresh Freesia. However, we're moving Fresh Freesia from the In Color family to the Permanent family. Um, this die carries over, rhinestones carry over, stamp carries over, this ribbon does not carry over. So um, I will tell you a few things about this. So this is um, cut a different way. It's four and a quarter by 11. You're gonna score it at five and a half. And then you're gonna add one and a quarter. So you're gonna score it one more at um, five and a half plus one and a quarter right there. Um, and that's gonna make the book binding. I saw that Cindy just made a book binding card. It was really sweet. So um, when you're making like, cause it looks like a bound book, right? So when you're making a book binding card, you have all kinds of options. How wide do you wanna make that? I'm really working with squares this month and this is a four inch square. So I wanted, um, I wanted a large enough binding that I could just fit a four inch square right there. And so um, very simply then, and this ribbon might be too small. This was the very end of this. You guys will get this. I have plenty of this ribbon. I just used the end of a roll. But um, so what I did just to get this card base uh, ready and then the bulk of this activity is stamping. So I tied my bow first. And then I glued kind of the hinge together, if you will. So um, I glued right here. You could use tear and tape as well. Um, but I just went ahead and glued the book binding. So that's all good and done. So I'll press that down. Oh, that little brown, that's the end of the tape roll. I really, I love to get to the end of a tape roll. Do you guys like get that feeling when you finish your final, final piece of DSP or your final, final piece of ribbon or your final gem? It's like, oh my gosh, I used it all and it went to good, happy homes. Anyway, so there we are. That's good and glued. We'll get those snipped. I'll put it off to the side. I might just tear that off. Uh, nope. Anyway. So there that is, that's it for the base. So now I wanna show you just some tips about two-step stamping. Now, I'm not going to do them both here, but I will give you two pieces in the kit. And the reason is, cause sometimes we don't stamp perfectly, right? So, um, and I'm just gonna show you, like how did I go about this? So I started with the largest pieces first. So I'm gonna start with the very long pair pizzazz like fern type pieces. Then I did Bermuda Bay and that's stamped off. And then I did the um, Mango Melody and I kind of did that in a triangle shape just to kind of center the eye. And then I did the Polished Pink and then I did the Fresh Freesia. So I'm just gonna show you some tips. I don't know that we'll stamp the whole thing, but um, I've got everything right here. This is the Two-Tone Flora. That is, that matches this paper. So when I was talking about the Flora Suite, like that matches this paper. These carry over, these have dies that match also. We're just gonna use the stamps today. So I started with the largest first and I just really, I'm not gonna do both, but you could if you wanted, like if you're like, oh, I really meant for the leaves to be a little bit over or whatever. Um, you could have two pieces there and just kind of play with it. But I just, I just wanted a little bit of green and a little bit of interest. So I just put a little bit there. Um, next, and this is pear pizzazz. So it's probably going to be my last use of it. Goodbye pear pizzazz. We have loved you. You have served us. And now we're going to go to Bermuda Bay. No, say it isn't so. I know Carrie loves this color. Carrie isn't as much, like I definitely am like it's retired. I'm going to show new stuff, but Carrie gets to keep using the old stuff. You guys can too if you want. Okay, what are we going to do? We are going to do two-step stamping. So um, all of the flowers have like a, I don't know, an any and an out here or like a solid and a and an outline. So it's the more solid one that you want to put down first, and then you want to do the outline. 
So I'm going to get that inked up. But if I were to do that, I'll do it on this guy. It would be super saturated. So if I did that, um, honestly, it's quite scrumptious as it is. If I were to do that, it's quite scrumptious, but it's like too much, right? So we're just going to do, we're going to stamp off and then we're going to come in and put that flower right there. And so now when I go, when I come in with kind of the, um, the highlighting and the emphasis, you can really see it. Now, some people really love to take time to line it up exactly. Actually, I did a pretty good job right there. I'm not always as um, you know good about lining it up, but that ended up being a pretty good job right there. So you be you. I kind of like the watercolor feel of it and playing with it and um, letting it be wherever. Again, I'm gonna kind of go for a little bit of a triangle bit with my colors. So I'm gonna put a little bit there. And even though I didn't on the other one, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit right here. So I'm not following my own pattern exactly, but you'll have photos or you can come back and watch this. You can follow exactly. Um, it's really, that's a fun thing about stamping. It's not exact, right? So or it can be as exact as you want it to be. So now I'm going to go to the next smallest color, which is so... Goodbye, Bermuda. Goodbye, Bermuda. I've loved you. I'm so grateful that some new colors are coming in. Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. So they're kind of in the Sam family. So super grateful because this is one of my favorite color. Although they're all my favorite. So same thing. I'm going to kind of stamp off with that. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to stamp off. Now I'm on my... Stamp in Pierce Mat because it's photopolymer, so I want to know where my edge is, otherwise it gets a little funky. But I'm gonna stamp over here and then I'm gonna do one more down here. And you might notice that with stamping off, like there's different gradation. That's okay because flowers have different, like you know, ombre effect and different shapes. And then once you cover it up with kind of the, um, you know, the overall shape. It just, it's really quite lovely, actually. So there we go. Goodbye, Mango Melody. Thank you for your service. And now, Polished Pink. I loved Polished Pink so much, it became the sentiment too. But now we'll do Polished Pink. Same thing, and now I'm going to the smallest size. And you can see why I'm going to the smaller sizes, because um, gosh, how am I even going to fit it in there? Well, I might have a little bit of overlap and I'm going to be okay with that. Um, especially if it's over the yellow, but, um, yeah, I might just, and you can see like, if you were working with the biggest first, then you wouldn't be able, hi Wrigley, Wrigley's visiting. He's been so wiped out just sleeping on the couch. He has been wiped out. He had a very busy day today. Bob gave a Wrigley report. All right, polished pink, that makes me sad. I'm really gonna miss polished pink. But we're coming in with a new one. We've got, um, I don't even have it yet, but bubble gum, no, bubble, what is it, Doris? Bubble gum, bubble bath? Bubble bath. <laughs> bubble bath, I keep calling it bubble gum. All right, so that's let's celebrate. And then don't do what I did. The other day I forgot to clean off the U in between stampings and so then I got a purple U. So um so we're gonna oh gosh, Wrigley really got a good workout today. Bob said he's just been passed out all day. It's great news. He keeps us on our toes, that little one. All right, so let's celebrate you. And there we have it. So you guys, I'm actually not going to put the rest of this together, but you get the idea, right? So you, um, I did it on a separate piece and then I can come in and I can adhere it. Um, and if so, if I don't like it, I can, um, I can redo it. Oh my gosh, is that pretty? Now I might put the sentiment a different location just because I like this layout but you'll get a oh and I didn't come in with the fresh freesia so just the kind of fresh freesia ties it all together and then you would put a couple rhinestones on there so again this is a book binding card 
And you could do this, let's say you go out my kit and you didn't get these flowers. Um, you could do it with different flowers that you do have, right? So pretty. So an old olive goes with everything. So that is our book binding card. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, and I put some Wink of Stella on it too. So I kind of blinged it up with some little Wink of Stella. So, oh, you guys, I am going to miss those colors. I was telling Melody, oh, no, no, let's move on to the new colors. But actually, I'm going to miss these colors. So you guys can still get these colors, um, many of them. Like, you may not be able to get the reinker. Polished Pink was out there for sure. Uh, Soft Suede was out there. I didn't check all of them. I'm very sorry about that, actually. I didn't check everything. So, um, and when you learn about stuff retiring, like if you really, really want it, you really, really want to get there and grab it as soon as you can. All right. The final card we're going to do today is we're going to do this happy birthday card. I've really been focusing on squares. Um, you're going to see more of that this month with bingo this month too. So, um, so this card, um, it's another one that's the long way and I've been wanting, I've never done one of these W folds and I wanted to do a W fold. So here we are doing a W fold. So again, I took the time to get some of the stuff done ahead of time. I'll have step by step and photos in my PDF. Um, but I'll give you kind of the shortcut here. So the outside, I mean, you guys know how to decorate an outside. This is a gingham embossing folder. You guys, this folder is $3 right now. So I did check this. It's um, retiring, it's out there, and it's $3. Um, and it's a great folder. It's a great pattern. And it, that was the one that I wanted. Like of all the things, I'm like, what's going to match what I'm doing here? It kind of matched the pattern. So that's what I went with little squares on the side. Um, and then this paper is flowers and more. That's a ginormous economy pack still available. Um, so the outside, these are cut in eighth and inch, eighth and inch, eighth and inch. And again, because um, that was just the look that I liked right there. So you could do quarter inch or you could do eighth and inch. And then this square um, I mean, really, it just depends on what you're going to put on the front of it. This square was, and it's in the PDF, I think it's four. No, it's three and a half. And then you just take it in a quarter of an inch. So the front, um, you know, pretty basic how you put it together. Again, just a reminder that you're going to want to do your ribbon before you adhere your layers. So that's going to be your front. But let's take a look at how to do the inside. I've already kind of kick-started and I got the designer series paper uh, lined so that we're not going to take time to do that. Um, I will make a note. Carrie and I were talking yesterday and it's like you get your designer series paper and you're like, okay, I want it to go this direction. Well, I liked it this direction because the candles. And then when I cut it, and I was certain I was right, and then I wasn't. So it's sideways, but you know what? It looks fine either way. But anyway, um, so I did my designer series paper first. What I really want to show right now is how to do this W. And it's like, if you look at it sideways, it's a W. That's why it's called a W. So let's take a look at what these ingredients are. You're going to take a strip that's one inch by 11 inches, and you're going to score it basically every two and three quarters. So you're scoring it in half and then in half and in half. So, um, so, and the reason is because it's going to go in half and then these are going to fold in half. I just used basic white. You could use another color. You could use basic white thick. Um, honestly, basic white was working fine and it was the color I liked. So that's what I ended up using. So I've got that. So now there's my W, right? And then the other ingredients that you need, your squares then are going to be two and a quarter inch. So um, I've got four squares, polished pink again, love polished pink, um, at two and a quarter. So basically when I put these on, there's still enough room all the way around. Once you get the mechanics of it, you can go narrower, you can go taller, you can do anything you want. I've decided to just be uniform at the two and a quarter all the way across. And then I came in quarter of an inch for all my layers. So, um, so 
And some of them I have on dimensionals and some of them I don't. Again, that's just to give texture and interest. So let's do every other this way with dimensionals. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. So now this is using the Puffin stamp set. Puffin retires, Puffin is sold out. If you want it, be the first one to contact me and as soon as I can sell it or make it available, I am going to be putting this in my BOGO, my buy one, get one in my retired stack. So um, if you love this guy, I have one, so be the first one to grab it. Um, so, and it is, it's sold out. So that's the deal out there, you guys. If you love something, get out there and get it. So I've stamped up Puffin and I've stamped up the candles and I'm just showing you the final stages of coloring. Polished pink lens and you know what here's the deal even if polished pink is retiring um it's a great idea to get the blends because then the more that you have in your library um you just might want just one little different shade of pink and especially as you learn how to do more shading and blending with the blends um you may want different different um like shades or hues or like different darknesses and colors. And I absolutely intend to do some technique training soon about how to how to work with blends. That's gonna be coming in the next when we've got the color refresh. So um, so if you want to get those polished pink blends, it would be great, great, great to add to the collection. This is Daffodil Delight, just absolutely a must. And um, these are carrying over. And then what color should I make the candles? I guess I'll just stick with polished pink candles too. There we go. Quick little boop, boop, boop. I think you could also color these with Stampin' Write markers. Why not? I think you absolutely could do that. Our Stampin' Write markers, if they're still available, they've been... Um, Kimberly got some at a fantastic, fantastic rate. They are, um, they're, they've changed the structure of the Stampin' Write markers. And so they're um, selling the old ones. Plus, of course, we're getting all new colors. So there's some great deals out there. You might take a look at that. Oh, before I glue my squares though. So now I have my squares all ready, but let's get the inside, um, inside done. So I told you it's an inch by 11 and it's scored every two and three quarter. Now I'm going to go ahead and use tear and tape and glue, but um, I'm basically going to put tear and tape on the two outside edges. So I'm going to put it there and I'm going to put it there and you will adhere the outsides all the way down, but you will not adhere the insides. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that up. And now, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the middle because I know I want it in the middle. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to put a little bit of glue first because if a little is good, more is better. When you have movable parts, you really want to make sure it's good and secure. So sometimes I'll use a double system, but I've got it in the middle. It's like snug against the edge and it seems like it's centered. So I'm gonna close it that way. Now, it feels like um, it's a little bit long on one side, so we'll trim it if that's the case. But there that is. Now I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and peel it and get my double adhesive. And I'm gonna go ahead and Make sure that that's centered. All right. So that's good. And then the W is going to go that way. So um, I feel like it went a little um, too far over the edge, so I might snip those. But there we have our card. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and add my four layers. So I've got this on a dimensional. I already peeled that off, so I'm going to put that there, and then this is just going to be glue, so I'm going to put that there. 
Now, I've seen it where you could kind of go up and down and up and down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy here. And then I already, I don't know who I'm giving it to yet, but I already wrote out a little sentiment. So now when you adhere it, you want to make sure that you um, are only getting, like when I put dimensionals on, I only put them in the middle. And when I put my glue, I only want it in the middle because I don't want glue everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then I've got make a wish. I feel like I'm going to put that on dimensionals. Now, one thing I noticed when I was doing this, um, maybe I shouldn't have been so snug in the middle because um, because now when I close it, it's going to come a little bit out the edge, but really I'm fine with that. Maybe don't be as snug in the middle. You could let it come out a little bit and you could play with it a little bit if you don't want that little bit of the edge coming out. Um, so there we have it. I'm going to put my little make-a-wish right there. And so now I've got my W. And when you open it, super fun card. Oh my gosh, I love it. So this is um, the unsigned version. And this is the front. Super fun. So you guys, thank you for coming today. Super and cute. Super, super cute. Well. Go ahead, Doris. Super cute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Really nice, Leela. Thank you. I hope you guys make them. And um, yeah, thanks. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Very sweet. Very nice.